Hello there, in today's video what I want to do is compare two 5 inch class refractors. One's the one I own, the Evo Star 120 by Skywatcher. The other one's a Stella Myra 125ED, which I've borrowed. It's got to go back soon. So before it goes back, I thought I'd just do one more test, and that is to compare a test scope costing £339 to one that costs, it costs £1,600 now. Um, so that's 4.7 times more expensive. So where does that money go? Most of the money arguably goes in the exotic glass in this compared to this one. My Skywatcher is a classic refractor and that uses a crown and flint glass objective doublet. And that's the type of glass that's been used for many decades, even hundreds of years now. It's That's why it's called a classic refractor. Very, very good for giving good contrast because there's no central obstruction like mirror-based telescopes. But the one arguable downside is it cannot focus all wavelengths of light at the exact same point. So when you pump up the magnification and look at brighter objects, such as when you're observing or imaging the planets, then you get to see this violet purple out of focus light when all the other wavelengths of light are in focus and that does give a bit of a softness and a bit of a color cast to the image which makes it a bit less natural looking than in this telescope which brings all the wavelengths of light to the exact same focus it's got what's known as extra low dispersion glass in it ed glass for short um, more specifically this has got two it's a doublet again, it's got FPL 53 equivalent glass and lanthanum glass elements for those that are a bit more technical and want to know that. But the, the short of it is, this has got classic crown and flint, this has got extra low dispersion. That one's sharper, higher magnifications and gives better contrast. This one, still, still good, but you've got that a uh, colour fringe chromatic aberration as it's known when you're using higher magnifications looking at brighter objects. I'd call these both 5 inch class medium focal length refractors. They've both got around a, a metre focal length and they've both got roughly a 5 inch objective lens. This one's 120 millimetres which is 4.75 ish and that one's just shy of 5 inches, one, 125 millimetres. Unless I went out and bought the ED glass version of this one which i'm not going to do it's the best i can do is borrow a very similar refractor so the price did i mention the price so 399 for this one 1600 for this one so nearly five times as much i think i might have mentioned that already not all that money is actually the lens as you can see this has got a carbon fiber tube retractable dew shield that's fixed this has got a fancier dual speed CNC machine focuser with a rotator on it. Um, you know, this is all rolled metal and cast metal. So this is made more to a price point. But how can we, is it possible to make this perform anywhere as well as this one? And the answer is maybe, because what you can do is you can use a filter such as this Barda Semi Apo filter and what that does is it filters out some of that out of focus light sharpening up the image. Now I've got this one fitted to my camera ready for imaging. This is my planetary camera the ASI 462 by ZWO and I've got that Semi Apo filter on the front ready popped onto my 2.5 times Barlow lens which is going to when I put that in the back of there and there, it's going to change that thousand mil focal length into two and a half thousand millimeter focal length for a lot better image scale on the planets. Now I will remove that filter when I'm using it with this telescope, but the plan is to image Saturn take because it's well placed outside. It's reasonably bright. Admittedly, things like the moon and Jupiter would show more chromatic aberration, so it would show more difference, but Saturn's well placed, so that's what I'm going to do this test on. I'm going to take X amount of thousand frames of this one of the planet, then immediately after take the same amount of X amount of thousand frames, two or three thousand frames I'll probably have time for. And then you'll get to see the AVI files, the, the movie files of those side by side to compare. 
but I'll also do some basic processing and show you a final image of both. And I'll apply very basic processing to both images. So there's as little error as possible being introduced into those images. I'm not going to image them both to my best of abilities. Uh, both images to my, the best of my abilities. I'll try and speak English in a moment. Um, but I'll do simple processing so I can be sure that as little error as possible has been introduced into the comparison. And we can see how well this one can get to this one by applying a 70 pound filter. days later so I just want to run through how I dealt with that data so 3,000 frames were captured for both those telescopes in sharp cap with the same position on the histogram to try and keep the, the brightness similar and then I used auto stack art to stack 30% of each with the same settings throughout and then I used registacks for a bit of post processing but I kept that quite basic just a simple click of the RGB align button and set all the wavelets to 12.8 to keep them both exactly the same neither were processed to the best of my ability but they were both processed exactly the same and the results, I think, are probably only 10% worse than I could do if I was trying. So I'm quite happy, really. And I'm confident that there's no error been introduced into the process when capturing and processing the data. With probably the caveat about the focus, because I didn't use a focus mask to focus on a star and swing over to the planet. I just focused on the planet with the image zoomed in with a small region of interest the best I could with both telescopes. Took several AVIs with both and then picked the sharpest. I think that it's quite clear that once I'd process those images, the more expensive extra low dispersion glass in the Stella Myra did its job and produced a very sharp image. I thought the, the colour balance on both was good, but certainly the Skywatcher was softer when presented at quite that quite large of an image scale. If I'd presented them a bit smaller, the differences might not have been so clear, but certainly when zoomed in that much, so we could definitely see a difference, the difference was there, and the Stella Myra was clearly sharper. Now, is it worth four times the price for that? That's really subjective. And also, I think you can only really tell that difference when you've got the telescope side by side. If you just own the Skywatcher, like I do normally, and I was using that and I processed, processed that image, I'd be happy with that. It's only when I'm putting it next to a more premium refractor with its sharper image that I look at the Skywatcher and think, hey, that's not as sharp as I'd hoped. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much to my Patreon and channel members for all the support you give. Thank you so much for that. And until next time, clear skies, and I hope to catch you guys and girls on the next video.